a we loved way. watching you, you know, do a lot of things offensively, but I, I'm captivated by so many of your, your defensive plays. How do you prepare for something like that? It's one thing getting ready for a game facing sliders and curveballs and fastballs, but the timing, the athleticism, the ability to leap, knowing when to lunge, when to jump, how did you prepare for something like that? There's really only one way to get game speed, and that's during batting practice. So we always focus on hitting, but when it's my turn to go to the outfield and it's Craig Monroe's group and Marcus Timm's group and Miguel Cabrera's group hitting, I got to get myself to see as many of these balls going left, right, in, out, hit hard, hit not to do. Because come game time, I may go a game where we have a Verlander throw a no-hitter. Right. And I don't touch the ball. Yeah. Like, everyone's like, how was that no-hitter? I go, I don't know. The ball never came to me. So, <laughs> yeah, I know. didn't get one that day. I know that. Yeah, you know, so you may go a day or go a week, and I go, I, I literally didn't have to move out here because our pitching staff was so good. Mm -hmm. So I have to be ready when that opportunity comes, and it all happens in batting practice. Granny, would you agree, though, playing defense, it's a want-to attitude. you got to want to make plays. So, so all of us want to hit. Yeah. I mean, that's sexy. That's beautiful. But to play defense at the level that you played, that, there's a want to. Yeah. You want to make plays. Is that the, kind of the mindset that you had when you took the outfield? You know, you got to go out there. The defense can never slump. Mm -hmm. The bat may slump. So you may run through a stretch. You may have some pitches you can't face. But when I'm out there and that ball's here, i got to go get it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where our multiple sport background comes into work, whether we played football or played basketball. Mm -hmm. All that comes out there when that ball gets hit out there. So when you start seeing the best of them go out there and they look like a wide receiver, it's probably a good chance they played they football play when they were right younger, you know? Because sure. they, they're able to track, put their head down and go, and let me catch this Hail Mary, or, oh, yeah, it's the ball I'm catching on the warning track. All that stuff correlates. That's why I highlight and tell so many young kids and families, play as many sports as you can for as long as you can because all of it translates to Mel and you to be the best athlete on the you, field. You do this for at a, at a national level, and you're excellent as a broadcaster, just like you were as a player. Assess the Tigers for us right now, and why do you think San Diego has been one of the bigger disappointments in baseball so far? So starting with San Diego, I think one of the things that we, we underestimate is bringing new pieces in doesn't always mash. Case in point, 2008, we trade for Miguel Cabrera and Dontrell Willis. They called us the new modern-day murderer's row. We finished last place in the American League Central. So sometimes it takes a little time for that new group to come in and gel with the old group. That could be it. But you have a lot of new pieces over there, and that might be part of it. Now you look over here with Detroit. I think the biggest thing with Detroit that is always in front of you is the Central as a whole is wide open. Anything is still possible. The confidence has to be in there. You also have a, have a motivation of what you're doing it for. One of the biggest motivations is number 24, who's not going to be in the game anymore. What better way to send him out than by getting to the postseason? But that has to come from within. And Miggy's not going to ask you to do it. No. Someone on that clubhouse has to get everybody together and say, you know what, let's all come together and do it for number 24. The number of things that he's done for us from watching him to learning from him, leading by example, that's motivation in addition to us just wanting to go ahead and be the best. That can give you all the opportunities to say, we're six games back. Yeah. Six games can get made up quickly, especially when you're playing the teams ahead of you. Mm -hmm. You get a weekend series, you sweep them real fast, and all of a sudden now you're three games back. Now you're two games back. It's September. It's that weekend that everybody's come, and here comes Comerica, and this place is packed, and they will be behind you. And another thing, you remember and this. you start to believe. Oh, start to believe, and don't let it be Cleveland. Because these Tiger fans will drive across <laughs> over there <laughs> to Cleveland and pack that stadium out. That was unreal. That was. I mean, Craig, I don't know if you remember that time where it was us and the Indians battling and the Pistons and the Cavs battling. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I They I had do taken over all of downtown <laughs> Cleveland. You leaving the stadium, and I remember the Cavs had just beat the Pistons. And somebody was burning a Rasheed Wallace jersey in the middle of the street. Of the street. And we're trying to get home to the <laughs> yeah. hotel. That's the passion that's here. And it can be there. You get them there, they will definitely come out. Great stuff. Great man. stuff, too. And you are so inspiring. Thanks a lot for stopping by. Oh, it's no awesome problem. we got a rainbow you. right now. Yeah, you know, it's a do. great well, time to be. I, look, I mean, the rainbow comes out when Curtis Granderson's <laughs> in the booth. There's, there, that's not a surprise. It's really not a surprise. It's going to be a beautiful night. We are going to get baseball in. You have to believe in that, just like you believe in some of the things that Curtis Granderson's been preaching here during this rain delay. Um, so the Tigers are up one nothing, and we're hoping that Matt Manning still has the opportunity to get out there and pitch because even though he struggled a little bit in the first, he was able to wiggle out of it. 
and then goes in into the second, and you see this long-term projection. We, ha we had a shot of you talking with Max Clark. Riley Green is this team's center fielder right now. We think he's a hell of a baseball player. What's the first thing you notice about Riley Green in a Tigers uniform? Athleticism and, and, and making it. We would look at it and go, okay, why would you play at this depth and location? But that allows you to be the most athletic. Everyone always tries to push you back. But when you get pushed back, now everything's in front, and I can't really be that wide receiver athlete. If I start to move in and I move left and move right, I have to go. I got to be at 100% as soon as I start. And that's what allows you to go ahead and be the best outfielder out there. Andrew Jones, one oh, of the best to ever do it. Unbelievable. I always admired how shallow, shallow he, he played. played. Yeah. And he said he played that way because when I had to go back, I had to go get it. I had to hell with a sense of urgency like yeah. we talked about, right? We hit those homers that we think are homers, and we kind of pause. But if it's here and it's that way, if I don't go, that's going to be a triple or the inside the ball, you know, inside the ballpark home run. So – it's those types of things you see, and you're excited to see it from a young player like that. Have yeah. you got a chance to see his swing? Because it's pure. He's got, he's, for me, he's just a pure hitter. Can do it with the best of them. Take a look at this swing here. Tell me what you think about Riley Green's swing and his approach. Uh, and you know what's funny? So right at the time, me and my dad are here in the ballpark. I say, you know what? Let's go ahead and beat the traffic. We'll go ahead and get a car. And boom, he hits this home run right here to make it 5 for it. Or, or at this point in time in the game. And I'm like, uh-oh, we got to stick around. <laughs> you know, he didn't just made it exciting here. But it's easy, especially when the ball is in. A lot of people think you have to cheat or you have to speed up to get to that ball. If you are down and you are on time like he's able to show, your natural ability will react and get to it, especially as a lefty. We like the ball down, down and, and in. in, and that's exactly where that ball was. Don't throw it in that ball spot, and I'm going to get to it. So not trying to muscle up in this ballpark can make you want to do that because you see how big it is. So when you make a dimensions adjustment, and go, okay, as long as I do my approach, I'll get rewarded. That can have all the confidence in the world versus I just crushed. That's all I got. Do I try to do more? And that takes you away from your game. But we saw, I mean, that ball went way. As soon as he hit it, the crowd knew. They yeah. knew that ball. And gone. those are the ones that you want to do, and you have to continue to repeat that over and over again. He's going to be good. There's yeah. no question about it. I mean, he's really the heart and soul of this team. As he goes, so does the Tigers. It just seems like. He makes Torkelson better. He makes I me. Mean, I think he makes everybody in his lineup better. And then, Kurt, he kind of reminds me a little bit of you. He does things like this, like you used to do. Just lay it on the line. Go get it. Go get it. Gets great jumps. He's got a good, great pitch, pre-pitch setup to where he gets the best breaks, the best jump, goes in on the ball well, goes back. This is the athleticism that you're speaking of, that you're talking about, that's going to make Riley Green uh, continue to be one of the better players and better outfielders, I believe, in this sport. And, and go get it and not have any fear. You're going to go ahead and die for some balls that people might not think you're going to get to, but you're going to get a lot more of them than anticipated, and the only way to know is to actually do it. And one thing that's very impressive, I wasn't that good at running in on the ball. Like you said, he went in a couple times to his left and to his right. That's very difficult to do. You think it's an easy thing, but just ask any player, say, okay, which way do you feel more comfortable coming? Are you better going this way? Are you better going that way? And if you don't know, Play tag with your, your, your kids and your family. You'll find out real quick. As soon as one of them's running at you, you're going to go to the side that you favor. Yes, you are. So not everybody is as comfortable going left and right, front and back. And he's able to show it right there. And Arizona's another big ballpark. Yeah. We saw, what, three or four plays right, right there. there. You're like, yeah. So it's, it's, it's really good to see, you know. And as a defense, when you know balls are like that, you know, ooh, wait a minute, hold on. He caught it. It uplifts everybody. Like you said, it's the heart and soul of it. A great play like that can be the motivator to shift things around and literally bring it back in your ball. Now it's our turn to hit. Yeah. Let's go ahead and do yes, something, uh -huh. you know. Creates it makes momentum. it fun to do it. Yeah. Well, you've accomplished a great deal in your career and in your life. Uh, the, the Willie Horton Legacy Award winner uh, is just another part of what you're all about, and uh, they couldn't happen to a better person. Thanks for stopping by, man. Oh, appreciate no problem. It. Thank you very it's much. great to have you this weekend. Tiger fans are lucky Love to you, have him Love as you, man. a Good former Tiger. Man. And here in Detroit <laughs> the this Grandy weekend. Man.